Now we have Katrina Dimaranan from Tagay. Hi everyone. So I've been to three Justin Bieber's by myself concerts, and one he looked straight into my eyes while he was singing. Talagang kinilig ako kasi you know what? I knew we had a moment. And everyone knows I hate spicy food, but for some weird reason, I still carry it in my bag because I just really like the taste of it. Tapatio lang. And I know this sounds super gross, but watching Dr. Pimple Popper is so. Satisfying for me. Now, call me spontaneous because I stayed at one of the most haunted hotels in California, and it was so creepy because the volume of the TV kept going up and down the whole night. It was so scary. And during the pandemic, I learned how to make kare kare, and it was so delicious that all I. Your first question, Katrina, is: In today's world, someone or some group often claims to be offended by something. Do you think that the world has become too politically correct and too sensitive? Hello. Yes. Hi. I don't think that the world has become politically correct. I think that what's going on right now is the cancel culture that we need to get rid of. I feel like that is a modern day of bullying, and I also feel that we need to stop cancel culture because it's as if we're judging people based off of.、Um, What their opinions are, if it's opposing to ours, all of a sudden it feels like it's wrong, and cancel culture needs to disappear because it's as if we lost empathy for the people. The Philippines and the Vatican are the only two sovereign states that prohibit divorce. Are you in favor or against legalizing divorce in the Philippines? I have been asked this when I was 18, and I still stand by what I think from before versus now. Which is as much as we want to stay committed to the person that we marry, we can't always decide whether or not they want to stay together. I know that married people stay together and try to work it out, but at the same time, we need to respect if they are no longer in love or if they choose better things that's better for their families and their children. How has the pandemic challenged you? It's challenged me in multiple ways. I mean, from having to go to school full time and working full time while trying to support my family, having to focus. Focus on school and from home. It it teaches us responsibility and accountability because we need to be more focused. And aside from that, I've had to deal from being away from my family and not being able to see them, and it's been very hard. But social media has been such an advantage for me because I can communicate with my family all over the world. Thank you very much, Katrina. Thank you. Now we have Steffi Rose of Rastri from Cebu Province. Hi, maayong adlaw. I'm Steffi Rose Pearson of Rastri, proudly representing Cebu Province. So, things that you should know about me is that I'm an island girl. So, I really enjoy swimming with the fishes. I even saw a pregnant seahorse, and at the same time, I swam together with treasure sharks. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Aside from that, I love love visiting the farms. And I even vaccinated thousands of chicks. And lastly, I'm a Sinaloa dancer and a woman of God. So that's it about me. Thank you so much. So Steffi, on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your beauty and why? For me, I rate my beauty of, of course, ten. I'm really blessed at what God has given me, and also my parents, because of that. For me, beauty is about being comfortable with your own skin, like knowing and. Accepting who you are for me, that's really beautiful. And beauty is skin deep. It's not just about the physique, but it's what's really in here. For me, that's beautiful. That's why I rate myself ten. <laughs> Thank you. Do you think there should be stricter censorship on social media because of widespread misinformation, defamation, and cyberbullying? For me, I totally agree with that. With now me as a social media person, as a queen, Dara, queen plus ten, Dara, I've always been into social media. And it's really important for me to filter what I post and what I share. And now people are taking advantage of the disadvantages of social media. Like we have to remind ourselves and put a borderline for us not to hurt other people, and remind that they, to make use of the social media the way it is designed. How has the pandemic challenged you? Okay. On this pandemic, I've encountered so many problems, but I rose up and stand with this challenge. With this pandemic, I learned so many things, like the value of communication. Before, I never really asked someone, "How are you? How are you doing?" But with this pandemic, people mean so much to me. That's why, with this pandemic, communication, life, and time itself is so important for me. Thank you. Thank you, Steffi.
Thank you so much. Mr. Hussein Marie Bernos, and I'm the first daughter, first granddaughter, and first niece in both sides of my family. So no pressure. But growing up, I had to do a lot of trial and error trying to figure out what I wanted to be. So in the last 10 years, I have been an interior design major, English major, working student, writer, freelancer, content creator, entrepreneur, English teacher in Spain, and now also a beauty queen. So I like to think that I'm more than just a jack of all trades, master of none. I'm also a very determined person with a lot of good stories to tell. It's nice to meet you. Your first question is, digital addiction can refer to phone, internet, or social media addiction. How would you intervene if you feel that one of your friends has digital addiction? I would probably become an accountability partner for her. Perhaps maybe I could check in at night, maybe at 10 p.m. I'll say, hey, it's time to stop. Let's go to bed, girl, and let's just go have some peace of mind. <laughs> is it important to do the right thing or avoid doing the wrong thing? I think it's important. It's more important to do the right thing because there is such an importance in being proactive about how we go about life. So it's all about doing, being mindful of what impact we have on other people. How has the pandemic challenged you? The pandemic has made me realize how fast and short life is and how helpless we can be if the basics are taken away from us. And so I have really learned to value the people in my life, care for them better and connect with them better for sure. Thank you very much, Hain. Thank you, everyone. That was and now we have Maureen Krista Robowitz from Pangasinan. Hi everyone, I'm Maureen Krista Robowitz. I'm 23, representing Pangasinan. I describe myself as a third culture kid because I was born and raised in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia to a German dad and a Filipina mom. From a very young age, I've been very aware of different cultures and religions, which helped my cultural sensitivity, but gave me a lot of stories to tell. According to my friends, my favorite way to start a sentence is in Germany, in the Philippines, in Saudi Arabia, because I've lived in all those places. Some people may perceive Perceive me as shy, but once I start talking, especially if it's something that I'm passionate about, like acting, makeup, travel, there is no end. So Mao, how would you describe your beauty to a blind person? I would say that the beauty from the outside is not as important. What is more important is the beauty from the outside. And my beauty is I am kind despite my bad experiences in life. I've experienced so many things, but I wouldn't wouldn't want anyone else to experience that. It is often said that high risk equals high reward. What have you risked in pursuit to become Miss Universe Philippines? I have risked my mental health. I've had a lot of struggles with my mental health, but I know that this journey will make it all worth it. I know that despite my struggles, I'll be able to overcome this. How has the pandemic challenged you? The pandemic has challenged me in a way that I have gotten so comfortable being an introvert. So this one is another challenge, getting out of my comfort zone again and really um, utilizing my platform to inspire so many. Thank you very much, Marie. Like or the places less traveled, you will always find me going against the grain. I am a Virgo and the epitome of a Virgo at that which means I'm obsessed with being organized and solving problems and nurturing the growth of those around me. Fun fact, you will never find anyone with a better memory than me, whether it's your birthday, your phone number, or what I had for Christmas lunch in 2012, you best believe I will never forget it. Victoria, would you rather be an Olympic gold medalist or Miss Universe? That's a hard question because either way, you are bringing so much pride to your country. But for me, I would have to say I would rather be Miss Universe because the the prestige that lasts with Miss Universe is so much stronger than what lasts with an Olympic athlete, in my opinion. And with Miss Universe, you only have to do it once and you bring so much pride to your country. Whereas with being an Olympic medalist, you have to keep improving. Every year you have to do better and better. So for me, yeah, I think I'd go with Miss Universe, but also because... Now, global warming has caused dramatic climate changes worldwide. 
As a beauty queen, how will you help in protecting our environment? It starts with the changes that you make in your own personal life and then extending that and using the platform that we have in Miss Universe Philippines to encourage other people to do the same thing. So for example, for me, I have actually converted to being 90% vegan because I know that animal agriculture um, contributes to so much uh, of the issues that climate change causes. And so even that minor change, I know I'm contributing to such a large issue and I know that I can use my platform to encourage other people to do the same. How has the pandemic challenged you? Above all else, the pandemic has challenged me in a way that has made me both stronger and more independent. I spent the first year of the pandemic in New Zealand and had the privilege of having that safety and security, but I still chose to sacrifice all of those things and relocate to the Philippines in January. And if there's anything that that journey taught me, it's that you might need to make some sacrifices along the way and you might need to give up on so many things and let go of so many things in your life, but you should never let anything, not even a worldwide pandemic, get in the way of your dreams. Thank you so much, Victoria. Thank you so much, too. <laughs> Now we have Beatrice Luigi Gomez from Cebu City. Hello, Bea. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Beatrice Luigi Gomez. I'm 26 years old and I'm from Cebu City. I love sports and my favorite game is volleyball. And when I have a free time, I go to the beach and I do scuba diving. And when I want to spice up my workouts, I do a few rounds of boxing and I do most of these things with my girlfriend, Kate. We've been together for six years, going seven in a few months. And in the height of the pandemic last year, we adopted a Pusang Pinoy and we named him after a chocolate bar. His name is Twix and I'm very obsessed with my cat. Bea, if you had the opportunity to live for 200 years, would you do it? If I had the opportunity to live for 200 years, I would definitely do it. In just a few years time, we, we try to crunch everything that we can to be able to do a lot of things and imagine the things that we can do if we live for 200 years. So I definitely will. <laughs> do you think that being a role model gives the people the right to know everything about your personal life? I believe they only need to see the goodness in me and not literally everything, especially not my personal life, but they just have to filter out the things that they can learn from. Lastly, how has the pandemic challenged you? The pandemic really did challenge especially my mental health in the past uh, year and this year. I struggled a lot and I wanted to overcome all of those weaknesses, especially my social anxiety. I had overcome it in Bini Bining Cebu. And when we were in a lockdown, I was forced to uh, retract from society again. And now I'm glad to be able to be in front of everyone again through Miss Universe Philippines. Thank you so much, Bea. Thank you. Kirsten Daniel Delavine from Asbate. Hello, good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kirsten Daniel Dalabin and my nickname is Kessis. I am from Masbate City and the story that I want to tell you is that I am a miracle baby. My mother and father had eight pregnancies and I was the only one who survived. And when I was six years old, I suffered from a viral encephalitis with only 5% chance of living and I survived. I think that the universe has been very kind to me and I think that it's my job to give back that kindness. Thank you. Your first question is, some people say that pageants foster stereotypes. What would you tell them? Mr. Voltaire, I think that belief is in itself a stereotype. There is no good thing or bad thing, it's how you think about it. And actually, joining a beauty pageant and being your truest self, that is the best way to break that stereotype. It's all in the mind. It's all about expressing yourself and being truly who you are. Thank you. According to Shakespeare, the eyes are the windows to the soul. What would people see if they looked into your eyes? Mr. Walter, I absolutely love that quote. And I think that the eyes are the first thing I see when I look at someone. And in my eyes, people can see that I am ready for this. I think of the Miss Universe job as something that I was born to do and that I will be putting my 
whole heart into it. Thank you so much. Lastly, how has the pandemic challenged you? Mr. Walter, I think that being away from my work, which is in showbiz, I get to be with I get to be with people every day in show business and make them smile. So one and a half year of not being able to do that has been very sad. But I was able to recalibrate and remember who I was with, who I inspired before I even came to show this. And I think it's very important to really recenter. Thank you very much, Kisses. Spanish children. And while living there, I was also I also learned a lot about myself and I was able to develop my sense of independence. And I think while living in the Philippines, a lot of you know how sheltered I was. And one of the things that I learned actually while living in Spain is I learned how to cook. But the only thing that I can make are pasta-based dishes since those are the easy ones to make. And your first question is, do you think that women who undergo cosmetic surgery to compete in pageants have an unfair advantage over those who do not have any work done? I don't think that women who have had plastic surgery have an unfair advantage because they did that out of to uh, to feel more beautiful and why would we feel that why would women who haven't gone under who haven't undergone anything feel insecure about it when um being beautiful comes from the inside and it is just how we radiate and how we show our confidence that we are beautiful at the height of what you think is the best year of your life you have to decide between two very challenging events facing financial bankruptcy or getting your heart broken, which would you choose? I would feel, I would rather feel getting my heart broken because in that way, at least I know that I still have, I still have, uh, you know, my finances, my, my financial capability to go on with my life and to feel, and to, to buy the material objects that I need in order to feel the comfort that I need in my heart. Thank you. Lastly, how has the pandemic challenged you? Uh, during this pandemic, my family has been through a lot. And one of those things are we lost my grandmother at the start of the year. And we learned a lot from it because, well, I personally learned a lot from it because uh, through that, I learned that I should cherish my relatives more, my friends and family, because you don't know what can happen. I mean, life is very fleeting and if we don't, cherish every moment and we don't appreciate our our close thank you so much korean